Welcome back to the garage, everyone. Today we have this 2011 BMW 335i with the uh, three liter inline six bi-turbo engine. And we are changing the oil filter housing gasket. It's a very common issue for these to leak on these cars. And today I'll show you a quick process on how you do that. It's quite the job. So we're in for a bit of a video here. So this is the engine. This engine is an N55, is what they call it. The previous generation was an N54. Pretty much the uh, same job. Uh, so here's our oil filter housing right here. And you can see there's oil coming around it. You can see right there down the belt. It's leaking onto the belt. And there's actually quite a bit of oil leaked down in there. I don't know if you can see very well. But anyway, we're going to start tearing things apart. And we're going to get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do to access... This filter housing, we're gonna remove the intake and the air filter, all of this junk right here, the engine cover, and that's gonna give us a little bit more room to show you what's going on with this filter housing, and then we'll proceed from there. So now that we got this stuff out of the way, Maybe we can see a little better. There's three bolts holding this on. There's one on top here. They're like uh, an external Torx, by the way. Uh, there's one on the back side here, and it's facing in this way. And then there's one down right behind the intake manifold. I'll take the camera and see here. Right down in there. So really, you can't get that bolt out without removing this intake manifold. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to remove our CAC pipe we're gonna to have to unbolt the manifold, move it back, and that will access that last bolt. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to get this intake manifold off, I'm gonna to have to pull this piece up here, which just pops up like this, get your lines out from underneath it, pull it out of the way. Um, we're gonna get our charge pipe off, and then we're gonna remove our intake manifold bolts. So it's been a while since I've done this job or worked on this car and uh, I've kind of forgotten how many things you got to take off to access anything. Working way up here, you got to take off things back here. So this cowl piece, uh, lower cowl, pretty easy to take off, two bolts in the front, a couple of retaining bolts up under the wipers here, and a couple of clips. Don't forget to take off this piece here, this little sensor. Just makes it so much easier for getting this engine cover off. You get all these lines out of the way and it's still stuck under the strut bar and stuck under that cowl. So I'm gonna take the bolts off the strut bar. I'm gonna remove that. It'll give me way more access to get this out. Easier, you don't gotta worry about breaking any of these cheap lines that get dried out and brittle. Um, and just gives me more access overall. So you can see I got the intake manifold pulled back just about an inch or so, allowing me enough room that I can get my socket in on the bolt right there. So we're just about ready to take the housing off. Uh, this coolant hose right here going into it, you can hear it does have some coolant in it. So instead of draining the coolant down, which I'd have to take the whole belly pan of the car off, I'm just going to jack the car up on one side as high as I can, see if I can get this hose a little higher than I than the coolant in the reservoir, then I'll know that I won't have a whole lot leaking out. I'm just gonna try it that way, pull the hose off, and hopefully I don't lose too much. So with the coolant pipe off, I only lost about that much coolant. 
Now that's with the car jacked way, way up. So now we're gonna unbolt our oil filter housing. Now these bolts are an external Torx, so don't be afraid if you have a 12 point socket and an eight millimeter and a ratcheting wrench or regular wrench, 12 point end. You can use the wrench for this one down here and behind. Just be careful you don't strip it. And the other two up top are eight mil, 12 point. So this bolt down here is giving me quite a bit of trouble. It won't come off. Uh, this hose is in the way, so I'm gonna remove the two bolts holding that hose. I already removed the plug here. You just disconnect it by pinching. Pull it out of the way. We gotta take those two bolts out, pull that hose off. Hopefully I don't lose much more coolant, but that will allow me more space for a ratchet and a socket to get that final bolt out of there. There, finally coming loose. You can see the little trick I did here, giving a little, maybe you couldn't see it from that view, but I gave it a whack with a hammer on the end of the bolt with an extension. And that actually broke it free enough that it came out. That's a neat little trick. If you ever get a bolt seized or froze, whatever you call it, stuck in something, especially like this aluminum, you can give it a whack on the end if it's exposed or on the head, and sometimes it will jar it free enough to break it loose. There we go, all off. And you can see it's leaking down around here. I guess it's kind of hard to tell because it's leaked out. But anyway, we're gonna change this gasket and put the new one on. We've got our new part here, courtesy of Rock Auto. All right, so once you get the gasket out, you just want to spray it out with parts cleaner or of some sort, get it nice and clean, and then we're going to install our new gasket. Pretty simple. There we go, just like that. So this is the mounting surface right here. I've wiped all the oil off it. Now you can see a little outline of where the gasket was. Um, now it was failing definitely in this corner here. I don't see any damage. You're definitely going to want to clean that off really well. Make sure the surface is nice and prepared for the new gasket to seal against it. Um, the old one didn't see any major spots where it looks like it might have failed other than being old and kind of dried out. These cars run really hot and the cheap gaskets tend to dry out and get very brittle. And that's why you have failures like this. I'm just using a piece of emery paper here. Nothing too coarse. See if I can just kind of buff off this remaining material on here. See if I can get it nice and clean. You don't want scratches or anything like that, so I don't recommend using a razor blade. Uh, maybe a good solution for a cleaning metal, something like that, but make sure you don't damage it, whatever you do. So now that we got our gasket all securely installed, make sure it's pressed down nice. Make sure your mounting surface is nice and clean. Um, going back together is the same as coming apart, but the opposite. So I'm just gonna put everything back together in order the way I took it apart. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick time lapse. Once I'm done putting it all together, I am gonna change the filter. I'm gonna change the oil in the car. It's due for an oil change. 
and I am going to make sure I top up the coolant after having this hose off of here. So I'm just going to do a quick time lapse and get it all back together. So we got it all back together, we got it up to temperature, we got no leaks, we got all our fluids topped up, and we got our oil filter and oil changed. So I think we're all good to go. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the torque specs for that oil filter housing, it's 16 foot-pounds, and for the intake manifold, uh, bolts are 11 foot-pounds. So anyways, uh, the other thing is clean up the oil off the front of your engine, I still got a little bit to do there. Um, it can cause some damage to your belt and cause other problems if there's too much oil in there. So anyways, hopefully this video helps. Hopefully it helps you get your BMW fixed up and back on the road. And uh, leave a comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.